Hello, welcome to today's class. Today we would be covering the CBSC net examination for psychology paper 2. We would be covering the set of first 15 questions for the net examination. So this time for paper 2, the questions were comparatively easier as compared to last year. Okay, uh, most of the questions came from Barron's and Cicerelli. So it's very good if you can practice the questions or the MCQs at the end of Cicerelli and Barron's. So let's start with the first question here. The Californian F scale measures. So Californian F scale, F scale here means the physicist scale. And that was aimed to measure the different components of authoritarianism. Okay, so the correct answer here is C, that is a person's proneness to being rigid or authoritarian. Okay, so this method was devised by Adorno. Okay. And he gave this a scale, uh, which tried to explain the personality characteristics of a person based on how rigid or how authoritarian the person is. The next question is Raven's standard progressive matrix is used to measure. So this test basically is uh, com comprises of multiple choice questions on intelligence. So it covers various aspects of general intelligence. Okay, and it's broadly classified under two main uh, types of intelligence that it is aimed to test. First is the educative ability and the next is the reproductive uh, reproducibility. So when I talk about educative ability, I say, what is my existing knowledge? Okay, and when I say my reproductive ability, that means how much I remember and I can reproduce based on my previous knowledge. Okay. <clears throat> so Raven's progressive matrix is used to measure the components of general intelligence. The next question is, uh, tachistoscope is an instrument or an apparatus that shows or uh, visualizes the image for a brief duration or a specific duration of time. Okay. So the correct answer here is B, that is tachistoscope. Next question is, you have to match the author and the concept. So this is a kind of very direct question that has been asked this time. Uh, so the correct answers here are, Kettle gave the concept of fluid and crystallized intelligence. So here is Kettle. The triarchic theory of intelligence was given by Sternberg. Gardner gave the concept of multiple intelligence. And general and specific factors were given by Spearman. Okay. Now we'll be talking about all these theories on intelligence uh, in the lectures on psychology. So you can subscribe at the Examris YouTube channel for further lectures and further concepts on uh, psychology. The next question here is: You have uh, you are given the parts of the brain, and you have to mention which part of the brain is related to which feature. So we know very well that. Thalamus acts uh, or helps to control the sleep and wakefulness function. So the, fir uh, the first is thalamus that is related to regulating the state of sleep and wakefulness. Okay. Then you have medulla that is uh, responsible for maintaining the upright position. So medulla is the part of the <coughs> brain stem. And brain stem is the uh, organ in the brain, uh, the part of the brain that is responsible for maintaining the uh, position or the upright position. The next is, which of the following is involved in producing emotions? So the correct answer is amygdala. Amygdala is involved in producing uh, or mediating emotions. Finally, you have, which of the following plays a special role in memory? The correct answer is, Hippocampus. Hippocampus is the part of the brain that is uh, that deals with special memory. So it's involved in memory storage because if you have a damage to this part, you will be unable to store any new information in the brain. So the correct answer, uh, the correct matches we have done here are as follows. So this is a question from uh, biological basis of human behavior. So this section is very important. You had uh, some of the tricky questions which came from this section as well. The next question is, 
which of the following factors influence the effectiveness of reward for example if i am employing uh, five people under me okay what will be the parameters in which they would work much more efficiently or the reward that i would be giving to them would be effective so if i am giving uh, say 100 rupees to each person in contrast to that i give rupees say uh, 1000 as an initi initiative or a reward for every work that is done correctly so the magnitude of the reward increases here and therefore the effectiveness of the reward will increase so worst is the is definitely correct so magnitude of reward will definitely increase the effectiveness of the reward then is reward delay so if i am giving the reward say uh, immediately after a person has done the assignment correctly that would much that would be much more effective as compared to a reward that i am giving after say 20 days of doing a work correctly okay so if there is a reward delay the effectiveness of the reward decreases okay that means magnitude and reward delay are two factors that directly affect the effectiveness of the reward so the correct answer here would be c that is one and two the next question is which of the following descriptions are correct now under weber's rule when we read weber's rule we know that greater the magnitude of the stimulus greater is the change required for the difference to be detected okay so the first is incorrect the correct should be greater the magnitude of the stimulus greater the change should be required for the difference to be detected and next is reflectance refers to proportion of incidence light that is to be reflected so the correct answer here is reflectance okay so fourth is also correct it's not adaptation but reflectance so therefore the only correct choices here are 2 and 3 <laughs> so visual acuity is the ability to detect resolve and perceive the fine details of visual display and image retina movement system is the stimulation of successive neighboring retinal loci that are formed and therefore you can detect the uh, uh, the complete image as such okay so 2 and 3 are the correct options here so answer d is correct that is 2 and 3 the next question is Uh, the next question talks about the concepts of memory and the types of memory so you have the context dependent memory and the state dependent retrieval both of these refers to the ease by which you can recall the information so context dependent for example uh, if i um, read a book when i was sitting on a uh, on a say um, Uh, chair in my library okay so uh, when i'll go to the library and sit on that chair again i'll remember that i wrote the uh, i read this book i read this section of the book okay so that's context dependent and state dependent is uh, if i read a book under the influence of alcohol next time whenever i drink alcohol i'll remember uh, the same context okay the same thing so that's a state dependent so both of these things uh, help one recall better okay so assertion is definitely correct the next is according to encoding specificity principle when i am retrieving information uh, the retrieval clue if they are matching during the learning phase the retrieval becomes much more easier okay so reason is also correct and this reason definitely explains that uh, the context dependent and the state dependent retrieval of the memory so both assertion and reason are correct and reason is the correct explanation for the assertion okay now let's move on to the next set of questions here so these of the que these questions as we can see were uh, much more direct in nature okay uh, they were not much confusing like the questions in paper 3 which are usually asked now cognition what is cognition cognition is a kind of uh, basically we talk about understanding a concept so it's processing understanding and communicating an information so the correct answer here is c cognition typically refers to processing a information understanding the information and then communicating that information the next question is based on left hemisphere now let's first understand so in the brain you have the uh, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere okay the left hemisphere governs the right side right hemisphere governs the left left hand okay 
so what does basically left hemisphere do so when we are talking about the functions of left hemisphere it's very important to say that left hemisphere is much more uh, verbal in nature and talks about handling the things in a logical sequential manner okay <clears throat> so the correct answer would be interpreting a speech and language uh, rest all are the characteristics of right hemisphere so if i am saying that i am seeing the forest but not the tree okay uh, that's a function of uh, right hemisphere but under left hemisphere what i will say is i can't see the forest because of the trees okay so that would be a characteristics of left hemisphere so what i am trying to explain here is right hemisphere is skilled at distinguishing various patterns or visualizing the thing as a whole while left hemisphere tries to logically sequentialize the things okay so if i am seeing i am seeing the forest not the trees that is a function of right hemisphere or that is something which is governed by right hemisphere but if i am saying i can't see the forest because there are lot of trees that's the left hemisphere that is working here okay the next question here is the perception that one is worse off relative to those with whom one compare oneself for example i can say uh, uh, my friend is scoring 85% but i am doing at just 80% so i am comparing myself to my friend and i am saying i am relatively worse off to my friend so that is a concept where we talk about relative concept and since it is relative we call it relative deprivation so the correct answer is d relative deprivation now how do we calculate t score so t score let's first know the formula so it's the raw score minus the average score divided by standard deviation into 10 plus 50 okay so here the raw score is 115 under iq test we say the average iq at 100 and the standard deviation at 15 we consider these as the standard values for deviation iq on a normal uh, rationalist type of intelligence scale okay so you have 115 minus 100 by 15 into uh, so 10 and 50 are the normalized t scores that are considered so you have 10 that's multiplied by the normalized standard deviation plus the normalized t score me okay so when we solve it we get so you have 15 by 15 into 10 plus 50 so that is 10 plus 50 that's 60 so the correct answer here is 60 okay so the t score of arish would be 60 So here is the method how we can find out or calculate the t score values. Now the next question is, the next question talks about the reliability index. We would be covering the reliability and true scores in a very detailed manner uh, in some of the further classes on psychology. Okay, so just subscribe for the YouTube channel on exam days for uh, the understanding of these topics uh, in a very conceptual form in detail. Okay. so here let me first explain the squared coefficient the squared correlation between the true score and the obtained score is what is the reliability index so that's a correct statement again according to classical reliability theory the mean of true score and the mean of obtained score are equal because we consider error as negligible or zero so since the error is negligible or zero we can say the mean of true scores and the mean of obtained scores are equal so this is again a true statement so both of these are true but they are not related to one another so the correct answer is b both assertion and reason are true but reason is not the correct explanation for the assertion now the next question here this question is a very interesting question and directly asked from cicerelli so in cicerelli you have uh, been there is a paragraph on creativity that mentions that Christian Simmelhai in 1997 gave the concept of creativity, and under that concept, he talked about four elements of creativity. The first element was creative people have broad range of knowledge, and they are good at using mental imagery. Creative people are unconventional, and they value their autonomy. Creative people value their independence. Okay, 
and creative people are not afraid to be different so they are happy if they are different they are not uh, afraid that they are considered as different in the society okay so these are the four things that were given uh, by the psychologist in 1997 Uh, regarding the creative people so both of these statements are correct but they are not related to one another or one is not the correct explanation for other so both the statements are independently correct so b is the correct answer here yeah? the next question is which of the following are the problems with punishment now when we talk about problems with punishment we say that aggressive punishment can model aggressive behavior that's very clear from the bobo doll experiment okay so that's a correct statement effect of punishment is often temporary and slowly and gradually it vanishes off okay if there is a severe punishment it will definitely create fear and anxiety among the people so first is correct second is correct and fourth is correct mild punishment is paired with reinforcement of the correct behavior is a kind of incorrect statement because it's not paired with reinforcement of correct behavior okay <clears throat> when you are punishing someone you are not reinforcing it with the correct behavior okay so these were the first set of 15 questions that we have talked about for the cbsc net psychology paper 2 we would be covering the further questions in the coming classes so stay tuned for that have a good day ahead